Now that we've been introduced to vector valued functions, let's start thinking about some calculus concepts with them, right? So let's talk about a little about limits here. Now, if you go all the way back to your introduction to calculus, what you remember is that we can say that some number L is the limit of a function f at the point t equals a, so the f of t, at, this, at some point a, if the difference between that function and the limit value shrinks to zero as that t value gets closer to a, right? So we say that the, the function value approaches this number as the, the function output approaches a number as the function input approaches a number. That, that's the relationship. And we write that as that limit as t approaches a of f of t. So we want to extend this to vector valued functions as well. And it turns out that it's a fairly intuitive way to approach this. So if I have some sort of vector valued function r of r of t, and I have some sort of vector l. Now this vector doesn't have variables in it. It's some numbers, x0, y0, and z0. So if I have some vector valued function and some some vector out in space, we can say that that vector function approaches this vector in space if the individual components of the vector valued function approach the individual components of that final vector. Now this makes intuitive sense. All you're really doing is instead of taking a single limit here, you're taking three limits and so the way we're going to evaluate these is we're going to evaluate those limits individually. And as long as they all converge to the point, then we know that the vector valued function converges to that vector.